Well, the studies are showing that we are losing our ability to focus on anything for any length of time. It's really a product of the culture that we live in. Our brains are constantly being overstimulated by the technology that has become part of our daily life. We actually operate in a state of distraction that feels completely normal. And we have forgotten what it feels like to be completely present in the one activity that we are doing in this moment. So for me, being fully engaged means learning how freeing it feels to be completely absorbed in the process of what you are doing right now. For one, your mind slows down because it's only processing what is in front of you. It's not anxious about the future. It's not thinking about the past. When you are fully engaged, you have complete access to your full consciousness. You feel focused, relaxed, and content, and your productivity increases immensely. Well, when I initially wrote The Practicing Mind, I wanted to share, among other things, how learning to be process-oriented, learning to live in the present moment, how putting my attention more on the experience of achieving my goals as opposed to the moment the goal was realized completely changed my experience of daily life. The response to that book was, to say the least, much further reaching than I could have imagined. I completely underestimated how eager people were for a new approach to how they were living their life and how what I had discussed in the book would impact so many people in so many different ways. Initially, I really didn't feel there was much more to say on the subject, but after many interviews, workshops, and coaching sessions where I interacted with readers of The Practicing Mind, I found that people not only wanted to talk more about the subject, but that they were asking the same questions after reading the book. So out of gratitude, I felt it was my obligation to write a follow-up, and that is fully engaged. Whether it's learning to walk, learning to read, learning how to interview well, or learning any new skill, we learn everything through the repetition of an action, whether it's physical or mental, with the intention of accomplishing something. Repetition with intention creates mastery and ease of execution. When we can understand this as the way that we function, and if we can learn to completely be absorbed in the process of what we are accomplishing, instead of being so attached to the moment that we accomplish it, there is a tremendous shift in how we experience achieving any of our goals. What pushes us out of the present is this feeling of being incomplete. We all have this sense that what we need to feel fulfilled, to feel happy, and to feel at peace is somewhere outside of ourselves. It's in some place and at some time other than where we are right now. So we feel like, after I get through this, I'll be happy, or when I get this next thing, I'll be happy. These are common emotions we all experience, and they are constantly nurtured by the marketing media. They represent a false sense of perfection that we haven't yet reached or acquired when all in our life will be right. This perspective fuels an impatience to get to the next step, which would be the future, so that we can resolve these feelings, or it may cause us to worry about things that have already happened, which is the past, which we feel are causing these emotions. The present moment is the only thing that is truly real, and most of us ignore the opportunity to experience it in favor of living in the past or the future. When you find yourself feeling impatient with where you are right now, in this moment, and then what is a great cue to bring you back into the present so you can reboot, so to speak, and re-engage in what you're doing. When you feel yourself struggling to stay present, if you can take a moment and see yourself in the future at any point in time, when you have acquired this particular thing or accomplished this particular goal, ask yourself, and then what? and examine how it feels. Will you feel perfect? Will your life feel fully realized? Will you never be impatient again or in a state of longing? By doing this, you begin to realize that this is a cycle we repeat over and over again in our lives. We are always very attached to some place, some time, other than where we are right now. However, 
when that longing is satisfied, we immediately just replace it with something else and the cycle begins again. This longing, I don't feel is a bad thing. It's part of our DNA telling us to always reach for more, to want to expand personally. But when it's misused, it makes us miserable. Catching yourself in this cycle and asking yourself, and then what, reminds you that you are participating in that cycle. And that cycle has never brought you contentment. And it also reminds you that you are no longer fully engaged in what you are doing. It acts like a tap on the shoulder to say, you're right where you need to be. Just pull your mind back into what you're doing right now. I would like people to discover that so much of how they experience their life is based on perspective. And that when you practice things like becoming more aware of what your mind is doing without your permission through thought awareness training, or you can call it meditation, you can learn to give yourself the power of choice and the discipline to make the choices that serve you best. Also by learning things like understanding your goals completely when you do this, you don't lose focus and confidence because you create goals that are unrealistic. Also, by understanding some simple truth, like when you feel you are struggling, all it means is that you are up against a personal threshold. And in whatever that situation is, with a simple shift in perspective, it can be seen as an opportunity to push yourself further along in your self-development. When something is easy for you, it's because you've already mastered it. When something feels more difficult, it's because you are in a state of expansion. You are learning to master a situation or a process, and it's perfectly normal to feel the way that you do. So, for example, who wouldn't want to be excellent at being interviewed for a job? Well, you can't develop that skill if you're not going through job interviews. That's the place where you get to practice and execute your preparation. So, if you look at feeling nervous when you are being interviewed as a normal part of mastering that skill and moving your threshold further, instead of thinking that your discomfort is a sign of lacking confidence, it can really change your experience and it can change your performance in that moment. <laughs>